Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover the containers topic in which we will cover the podman command. So now this is a very important topic from the exam point of view. So if you have liked the videos that I have shared so far, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share. Okay, now what kind of questions can be asked? So I'm not going to detail here what containers are. For that you can find a lot of videos on the net. So my focus will be on the use of podman for pulling a container image so the questions can be based on how to pull a container image then how to run a container then how to map the container to a local directory and finally how to run the container as a service so these are the four things that we are going to cover okay so the first thing that we require is to download a couple of packages so you can download the podman package and the container tools package okay so this you need to download i have already downloaded them okay so there will be nothing to do in my system for these all right so you can see that there is nothing to do because i have downloaded all the packages now the first thing that you need to do is podman login okay so you need to log in into the registry that would be given in the exam and let's suppose this is what they have given and then they will ask username and password so this username and password will be given in the exam okay so that will be provided to you in the exam you need to find it out what is the username and what is the password for that particular user you need not to really search for it it will be clearly given in the instructions So I'm going to log in here. Okay, so you can see login successful, right? Now the next thing that you are required to do is to search for an image. You need to download that. So they will give you the name of the image that is required to be downloaded. So here in this case, I'm going to download the HTT PD image as an example. So what you can do is if the path is not given so when once you are trying it here in your systems so you can search for the available images so for that you need to use podman search and then whatever image you are looking for all right so you can see there a list of images that are available to be downloaded okay so you can pick here for the trial any one of these images but in the exam if they specify you a specific link like for example here if you look at the last entry so that's docker.io slash manasip slash httpd so this is the link from where to download the image so if they have given that link you need to use that particular link only so i'm going to download one of the image using podman pull okay so pull is the command then you specify the path of the image so docker.io slash library slash httpd so okay so this is one of the paths that will be given in the question okay so this is the link from where i'm going to download you can download from any of the links that were there in the search command i would prefer that if you use the uh, same image so that whatever output i get on the screen the same you also get okay all right so you can see that the image is downloaded how to check so you need to write podman images so you can see that there are two images one i have already downloaded earlier rsyslog the second one the current one that i have just downloaded that is the first entry here look at the third column image tag sorry image id okay so this is the id of the images and we are going to use this for further processing okay so we have the images here now in case you want to delete any of the image the command is podman rmi remove image rm is for a different purpose to remove the container rmi is for the image so let's suppose i remove the second one rsyslog again if i look podman images so you can see that 
the second image is deleted so now this can this will be the first step that you need to download the image so now once you have the image you can run it the second part is to run the image so since i have downloaded the web server now if i show you on my system that now i'm going to show you quickly what is the use here of this image that we have downloaded if i use system ctl status of httpd service on my system okay not the container but on my local system so you can see apache is not running at all okay it is inactive so apache is not running on my system so even if i use this curl command localhost so you can see it is giving me an error okay so this means i'm not able to host anything as of now from my system because i don't have the apache server so what i have done is since i didn't have the apache servers i have downloaded a image for the server okay so now i'm going to use that image so now if i use podman how to run it so you need to use the command podman run okay now there are different ways of running it i'll show you them one by one so the first one is if i simply run by using the command podman run minus d d is in the detached mode okay so you will be able to see it minus hyphen hyphen name so you need to give the name okay so let's suppose i give it the name web1 then you give the image so let me first list the image so that i can see the id okay so podman run minus d hyphen hyphen name and then web1 is the name and now you can give the image id d a b b and complete it by pressing the tab it will auto complete and now we have the container running how to check podman ps so you can see here the status it is running up 7 seconds ago okay this is the container id okay and here it shows 11 seconds ago it was created up 7 seconds ago okay web1 is the name of the container now the second method here is that you might be required to map the ports so in that case what you can do is you can use this podman run minus t name change the contain let's create web2 container minus p and then you need to map the ports okay so i'm going to map the port 8080 to the local port 80 for the same image all right so podman ps so now you can see both the web1 as well as the web2 container are running now if i try to curl local host on the port 8080 so you can see that now a web page is hosted it works okay so you can see it here in the browser also so once i open the browser in the address i write in the url i write localhost column 8080 so it shows you it works okay so i'm able to host a web page and this i have done using the container image okay there's no httpd service running on my local system okay this i am able to do only after i have downloaded and started the container image all right so now what we have is we have these two processes that are running right web1 and web2 if i want to stop one of these images container sorry so then you can use podman stop let's suppose i want to stop web1 right now list again podman ps so you can see web1 is stopped now if you want to remove this then use podman rm rm is to remove the container and rmi is to remove the image so you can see now that the image sorry the container is deleted now another way to run a container image is you run using minus i t means in the interactive mode t is for a terminal write the image and use 
bin bash okay so we are going to use the bash shell here so you can see here now what has happened is the command prompt is changed now i am using the apache server okay how to verify if i list here the host name so you can see this is the host name for the server and this is not the my local machines host name that i will also show once i exit from this now if i see if i use ls so what i am able to see here you can see pwd it is showing me the directories for from the apache okay now how we got that it works all right when we hosted why we got it works because that's the default page here how to find it out simply use find where in the root directory of the container okay since we are inside the container so i'm going to now look for where that it works that page is coming from so in the container by name index.html we know is the default file okay so it is stored at this particular location if i view this file now usr local apache 2 hd docs index.html right so you can see it is written here it works so that's why it is coming if you change the content that will change now what else they can ask to do you with the container is now i'm going to exit and if i now show you the host name so this is the host name of my machine okay this shows that earlier i was within the container right so the next part is they may ask you to map the container to a local directory how to map it so for that first you need to create a local directory let's suppose web okay slash web now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to show you what actually happens with that what's the advantage so i want to host now a web page which is locally present on my machine so let me create that within this web directory now and let's name that as my page dot html okay so and let's now write something into it other than it works okay so that we can verify okay this is my web page developed for testing container okay that's it save it now again podman run so this is the command minus t hyphen hyphen name let's pose web 4 okay map it to port 80 80 and now minus v okay what i'm going to map web directory on my local machine to which directory on the container okay so where now i will write here usr so that mapping can be provided in the question so here i'm going to map it to the default directory in the container from where it is fetching the html file apache 2 hd docs f1 okay so i missed the image right cannot listen on dcp port 88 okay 88 is already mapped so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it let's suppose 881 and change the name also here fine it's created it's now podman ps so you can see web5 is running so now curl localhost 8081 and what is the page that we created i forgot the page was my page dot html okay so curl localhost 8081 slash my page dot html and you can see that whatever page we wanted to host from our local machine we are able to do that so you can do it here also 8081 you can test on the browser itself if you want and if i write my page dot html so you can see that the local page we are able to host